Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com. And last week I told you about the new book I have out. It's right here, Fast Faces. And at the very, very end of this book is a very short little snippet about making a mold. So if you create one of the Fast Faces and you don't want to use any of the free and easy ways to share and save it, you can actually make a mold with it and cast it in plaster or cement. So now I'm going to give you a little bit more information about that process, but I want to remind you, if you use it for the fast faces, the last thing I want you to be thinking about when you're making it, when you're playing with your clay, is, is this good enough to save? I want you to learn how to be spontaneous, how to find um, the suggestions in the clay, how to make completely original and new faces in clay that you probably wouldn't have thought of making before. That's kind of the point of the book. But I have to admit, I saved all of mine. <laughs> My daughter talked me into doing a joint show with her down at the Sioux Falls Library. And since it's a library and I had a new art book coming out, it seemed appropriate for me to show uh, my faces. And I put them on uh, little plaques that I got from Walnut Creek. I think they, they look really nice. And the other reason I'm going to show you a little bit more about this process is that Rex Wynn asked me to. <laughs> he got to see uh, the book a little bit ahead of everybody else, and he thought it would be kind of fun to put faces uh, in the garden made out of concrete and just put them around under flowers and bushes and things, kind of sneak them in. I think that's a great idea. I did tell you in the book that it's a really good idea <laughs> if you're going to buy the materials from the Smooth On Company. This is the stuff here. It's called Rebound 25. This is what I like to use um, and I definitely suggest that you watch their videos. This is going to be a shortened version of it. This stuff is expensive and I've kind of figured out a way that I can go around some of their you know, rules and regulations to create a really usable uh, mold, which is two layers instead of what they like to use, uh, like three or four. It uses less material, so it's a lot less expensive, but there's no guarantee that this way is going to work, and if you've never done it before, I really strongly suggest that you go to the Smooth On Company's website and actually watch their videos. I'll, I'll put a link to it down below this uh, video here. I made this little guy yesterday for my demonstration. I put it on a separate piece of wood. I didn't put it on the stand itself because we're going to be working with some juicy stuff and we need to be able to lay it down flat. Before you do anything, you need to get your model ready. And the one thing that I did with this guy is I went around all the edges when it was still damp yesterday and the, the clay was quite soft. I went around all of the edges to make sure that the really, really wet silicone can't get under the model, you know, all the way under it. You also don't want any areas like, like under this ear. I didn't want the silicone to pool into a big space that was underneath this ear. So I put extra clay under it and then pushed the ear back down. Now what I did after it dried, uh, just a little bit, I made it yesterday, I left it overnight, and it's now stiff enough so that when I'm using my brush, this one here, it's not going to change the shape. It does not have to be dry, like bone dry. In fact, with this one, I couldn't let it be bone dry because the ears would have fallen off. But it does need to be stiff enough so that you can handle it comfortably. You're going to need some of this stuff. This happens to be a brand I had in the basement. It's just a clear wood finish. A lot of people use the Krylon brand. I don't know if it makes any difference. This works just fine and it dries really fast. Um, just go ahead and spray that. Take it down to the basement or out to the garage. You don't want to do it in the house. It kind of stinks. You're also going to need some gloves. You do not want latex gloves because we're going to be using a silicone brush on mold and silicone does not like latex. I don't know why. I am not a chemist. So use these as nitrile. You can get them at almost any hardware store. You're going to need some popsicle sticks to stir. You're going to need some brushes. This is a chip brush. I use a lot of these, so I just buy a carton from Amazon.com. You're going to need a cup to mix your material in. 
I'm going to be using these little medicine cups uh, to measure. I bought these on Amazon too. You can probably get these at a pharmacy. The last thing we need is the silicone and we need to move our tea. So you can see there's a, a part A and a part B. For the second layer, I'm going to add some of this stuff. It looks pretty bad <laughs> because I don't know why, but I bought this gigantic bottle of Thyvex probably 10 years ago, and I might have used four tablespoons so far. They also sell it in a tiny little bottle. Get that one. Now before I turned on the video camera, I mixed these up, and that is something that you want to do before you start. And then you need to measure out equal amounts. Like I said, this is really tiny and it's really juicy, so the layer you put on here is going to be extremely thin. You don't need very much. This looks like an odd way of doing it, but I have tried pouring it into these little cups and you end up with material all over the side of your bottle. It can be a mess. Now one really important thing to remember is you don't stick uh, anything into one of these bottles and then stick the same thing into the other bottle because if you do you're going to end up with little balls of hardened silicone inside of the bottle and it's going to really mess things up. Okay now it's time to mix them together. You want to get it as thoroughly mixed as you possibly can so that all those little pink and white molecules meld together really well. And once you get to the point where you don't have any separate colors, keep mixing it anyway. Just, just a little bit more. It doesn't hurt. And now we start putting it on there. We're going to put it on very, very thinly. Now the one, the one really tricky part about adding the first coat is that you're going to end up with air bubbles. Now you can see it right there. The product does not want to go into the nostril because air is stopping it. There's already something in that nostril. It just happens to be air. Now sometimes, I don't think you'll be able to hear it here, but you can sometimes hear it snapping. And that means that there's air on the inside, even if you can't see a bubble in there. It doesn't look like there's a bubble, but if you hear the snapping, you know there is one. And it has to be removed or you're going to have a flaw in the final casting. You want to put a little rim around the bottom edge. Kind of gives you a handle when you're pulling the, uh, the mold apart. And now I'm just going to go around and make sure that there aren't any air bubbles in the really deep parts. It looks to be pretty good. Oh, there was one there. Got it. Now I've still got some left. You can see how thin it is. Um, it just goes, it just kind of runs out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thicken up what's left. You can see how thick it gets when you add just a little bit of the Thyvex. You do have to mix it up pretty good. Don't want to get carried away and add too much because then it, it um, gets really too thick. The thick material fills in all of the undercuts because you're going to be putting a, a hard shell made out of the plaster cloth over the silicone and if there's an undercut in the silicone then uh, you won't be able to get the, <laughs> the plaster shell off it would get stuck uh, on your bulldog or whatever it is that you're making and kind of ruin the whole process you'd, you'd never be able to to get it off. 
So we need to get all those undercuts filled in. There's a lot of them on the top, on the actual face too, but I'm not going to be messing with those right now. We want that uh, the first layer to be nice and smooth and, and capture all those details without me pushing things around and messing them up with this thicker stuff. We're going to wait till that part cures a little bit and then we'll go ahead and finish it, finish it up. You don't want any air bubbles to get caught under this thick stuff either. Throw your brush away, throw your, your cup and your popsicle sticks away. You won't be able to use them again. And now it looks like this. You can see I, I filled in the deeper parts with that thick stuff. Whatever happens to be left over. You wouldn't want to mix up any new material to use it right yet. But if you have some left over when you're making your first coat, then go ahead and thicken it up. There's a an air hole right underneath that ear. I didn't notice it when I was putting this together, so that's going to have to be taken care of before I thicken up the next coat. Now I'm going to put this away at least 30 minutes. It depends on how warm your room is. And it will cure to the point where when you touch it, it feels a little tacky, but it doesn't come off on your glove. Right now it would, obviously. And so I'm going to leave this and, um, and let it cure, like I said, for at least half an hour, probably an hour, and then come back and add that second coat. Okay, it's time for me to make up some more of this goo and put the very last coat on there. I just have to fill in that hole by his ear. I don't want to use a brush for this tiny little spot, so I'm going to see if I can do it this way. Probably not a perfect idea, but I'm just going to add some thickener to it. I'm going to thick enough so that it'll stay where it belongs and not just kind of smoosh out over the whole thing. Now again, what you're looking for is no undercuts so that your shell that goes on the outside of this won't get stuck. You want it to just easily lift off. I'm just putting that lip around the edge. It'll make it just a little bit easier to use the mold when the time comes to take it all apart. Now for the hard part. I have to leave it overnight. I can't do anything to it at all until the silicone has completely cured and there's no tackiness or anything on it at all. This is not an instant thing, <laughs> for sure. It was really fast making a little bulldog. That took like you know, maybe 15 minutes, but making this mold is quite a bit bigger project. Once this is cured, and that'll be like overnight, I'll come back to it and then we'll make that plaster uh, mother mold is what it's called that'll go on top. So I'll see you in a few minutes and it will really be about 12 hours. So now it's been at least 12 hours. I left it overnight. It's ready now and you can tell because it's quite, you know, you just touch it and it's rubber. Now what I want to, <laughs> this thing here um, looks kind of silly, but this is just a container that happens to have fit almost every one of my uh, fast faces, just purely by accident. And I'm going to be keeping it this way, putting the mold in it, so that I'll have the support for the mold when I'm pouring my plaster or, or cement. But I want to make sure that there's a rim that's wide enough so that it won't slip around or fall in. So I'm going to put it over my silicone, and I'm going to use a pan here and just draw around it. I'll make sure that I leave enough room so that it'll be very well supported. And this is just to um, kind of give me an idea of how far out my plaster cloth mother mold has to go, the shell. And now I need to make sure that the plaster cloth doesn't stick to the wood. I just put a little bit of Vaseline on my paper towel here. You don't need to worry about it. 
on the silicone because hardly anything will stick to silicone. The plaster cloth certainly won't. But plaster cloth will stick to wood. You can use any kind of oil for this. You don't have to use Vaseline. You can use um, you know, olive oil or anything else. You could even use a, like a spray oil that you get in your kitchen. Okay, now it's time to go get some warm water and some plaster cloth. So now I've got my warm water. I should have used a bigger bowl, but this is the one that fits on this little table. I've got my plaster cloth. You can get plaster cloth off Amazon.com, or you can just go to your local hobby store because they always have it. I used a craft knife, and I just cut down the middle of it, as you can see. And that's the easiest way <laughs> to get some small pieces. You do that over a garbage can because it's going to have dust everywhere. I'm going to put this one aside. You do not want to drip <laughs> onto your unused plaster cloth because as soon as it gets wet, it starts turning hard and you have little um, hard bumps in there. I like to use two pieces at a time. I dip them both in there, lift them up so that it drips a little bit. I like to double over the edges so I have a nice strong edge. That's what's going to be supporting this mold in the plastic container, so it needs to be fairly strong. You want to smooth it off because this helps the um, plaster dust uh, mix in with the water. Very carefully pick this up so we don't get anything wet except what we want. You can see I've, I've got it all the way out to that line so I know that I have plenty of space for the, for the edge. So that's all done. I left the plaster for a couple of hours and it's nice and hard now. It's not dry, but it's certainly hard enough to hold up. popped right off, which is exactly what we wanted to do. That meant there were no undercuts at all. Whoop, lost part of it. That's his collar. That was the last part I put on there and it wasn't stuck on very well. And we're losing, yeah, it's gonna fall apart. Now this happens because I wasn't designing my little bulldog for, especially for a mold. I wasn't, I was trying to do it as spontaneously as possible because that's what makes these little faces fun. So I lost part of it. I could put it back together if I needed to, but hopefully I won't need to because I'm going to make a copy of it. Now this clay, even though it's got this spray paint on there, I can put this back in a plastic bag, just cover it up with a wet paper towel, and it will um, eventually, well, as long as I get the plaster off, it will eventually soften up and I can use it again. I'm just going to put it aside right now, and I'm going to go wash off the inside of my mold, and I will be right back. I washed the clay out of the inside, and now there's two more things we need to do before we can start mixing up our plaster of Paris or cement. The first thing is you look on the inside of your mold. And because these little faces are made quickly, um, we're not really paying attention to whether or not they're being done right for a mold. Whoops, I'm trying to get it open here. There's going to be little areas where the uh, silicone just seeps way down inside of your face. And we don't really want those little bits there because they'll get trapped inside of the plaster. So we'll just need to take some scissors and we're going to cut those off.
Now I'm going to spray it with this glass cleaner just because it kind of um, helps keep bubbles from forming on the uh, inside where the plaster meets the silicone. Don't want very much, just a really light spray and I'm going to brush most of it off. It's the soap in there that's going to help. So it makes no difference at all what brand you use. It's just uh, just soap. You don't want it um, really wet. You don't want like a pool of water and soap on the inside of your mold. You just want something that uh, would just kind of put a little bit of a, a film of soap on the inside. Very, very lightly. Put it back in here. It's holding it nice and steady. Now if you're going to be displaying your casting in the house, go ahead and use either plaster or hydrocal. If you're putting it outside, you have to use something that's made out of Portland cement. Now I don't happen to know what brand this particular thing is because I, I moved it out of the bag and into a big plastic tub. I didn't label it. I'm just kind of make a depression in here. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. It may not take very much. And I want it to be thin enough so that it'll go into that mold and I'll be able to kind of uh, bounce it around to get the bubbles out. And like this would be really nice for making a concrete stepping stone. I think I need to make it a little bit wetter than that. Maybe just a, a few drops. It is so easy to get too much water. Take my popsicle stick. I'm going to push it down into that ear. Fun part. We need any bubbles that are still attached to that silicone, and there will be some, even though we use the um, the soap. But we want the bubbles that are attached to come loose. So. You got to do this very carefully. I'm I'm only just very gently tapping it because I, the um, plaster cloth is not very strong. could easily destroy it if you got carried away with this. I just want the back to be nice and smooth. And now we need to leave it alone again and I'm going to leave it probably 24 hours before I take it out of the silicone. I want to make sure that it's hard. It does not get hard as fast as plaster. If you're using plaster or hydrocal, you can probably pull it out of the mold in like maybe three or four hours. Cement does not harden up quite as fast. It's just it's a chemical process and it just takes a little bit longer. So be patient. I'll be back. Okay, it's been in there for 24 hours at least, and I can tell that it's hard. Uh, by using my fingernail on there. It's not completely cured. Concrete actually takes about a month to completely, totally cure. It's not like plaster where it goes really fast. But I think it's hard enough I can take it apart. This is always a scary part. <laughs> so let's see what it looks like in there. They do have cement products that harden a lot faster, like the quick wall and the um, fast set mortars. But this one is not a fast one. And very carefully open it up.
I know you're getting impatient, but <laughs> I'm trying to be really, really careful. So that's how you make a casting of your fast face. Like I said, I really did hide this in the very end of the book <laughs> because it's not a really fast, not a really easy way to do it. But if you want to keep your fast face forever, this is the way to do it. So I hope that helps. Um, if you want to make a silicone mold and you just want to use two layers instead of three or four, like the manufacturer suggests, this is the way to do it. And it usually works, but there's no guarantees. <laughs> Anytime you break the rules, there's no guarantee. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, I do hope you'll do that. Hit the little bell thingy so that YouTube will tell you when I put a new uh, video out. And then come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.